Hi beautiful people, how are you all doing today? My name is Mark and I love making things sweet and in style. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And this is where I do anything and everything creative. So for today, I've decided to share with you how I make my Juliet Rose without using any styro or wires at all. In fact, you can actually use a barbecue stick for the main step. So here is what it looks like. See that? There's so many petals. Some of you may be intimidated to make one, but it's actually very, very easy. So what are you waiting for? Let's start. Okay, so the first thing you need to prepare in order for you to make a uh, Juliet Rose is the base. So what I have here is just gum paste. So I made it into a fine ball, as you see that, and the size is 1.5 centimeter. You can go bigger if you want your Juliet Rose to be bigger. This is just for the base of the flower. Just like any other rose, it needs to have a base. So you see that? Uh, I dried this half a day, so it's very hard. Okay. And then I placed uh, wire number 23. If you don't have wire number 23, you can combine three pieces of wire number 18. So it would be thick and very hard. Okay. And then after that, I'll teach you how to thin out and cut the petals. Okay, so what I have here is paste that is color very, very light pink. To achieve this color, I just mix in very little red with the color white gum paste. You can also use cold porcelain or clay. And then what you need to do, of course, you need to condition your face first. Just like so. And then you need to dab cornstarch on your working space. And then we start rolling. Okay. Always remember to roll in one direction so that your gum paste won't stick. Okay, you have to roll this as thin as you can. Okay. And then we'll be using cutter number one. So for the size of cutter number one, this is 2 cm in diameter. Okay. So you need to cut you need to cut at least 20 pieces of this one. You can go more if you want it to be fuller, but my standard is 20 pieces of cutter number one. And then what you need to do next, you need to get your foam pad. Okay, you put it on your foam pad and then you dab cornstarch so it won't stick. Okay, and then we'll zoom in a little bit so you'll see what I will do. Okay, and then you need to get your ball tool. And you need to stretch to make it bigger. Okay, so for this time, you can actually touch the center because this is non-wired. Okay, you just have to make it really, really wide. See that? So the size now is already 3.5 centimeter in diameter, okay? And then using the smaller ball tool, you need to go around the edges. Yes, you need to make it really, really curly, okay? So you need to make this in all the petals, and then once you're done, you need to place all of them on a air dry, uh, airtight container, sorry, so that it won't dry out, and then later we will assemble it on our base. Okay, so right now we'll be assembling the petals on our base. So as you see here, I have a container. You can use a Tupperware like this or a Ziploc where you put all your petals after you thin out and fill the edges. And then we'll be using an edible glue. So for the consistency of this one, I'm gonna put it on the description box below. So I suggest you check it out, okay? And then I have here an uh, ordinary paintbrush. Okay, so this is what we'll use for gluing the petals on our base. So the first thing you need to do, you need to get three petals, okay? And then what I will do, you need to get very little amount of your edible glue and dab it on your hands, okay? So what I'll do now, I'll create a line at the center, okay? And then I'll put the next petal, just like so, and then I'll create another line, okay? And then I'll put the last petal, Okay, and then after that, you need to get your petals, the three pieces, all together and fold just like a taco shell. Just like so. And then, you need to get your base. And then what I will do, I'll create 
a letter C. Okay, you see that? Using the edible glue. So it needs to be letter C or curved. And then I will attach. So the rounded part of the petal should be on the upper part. It's like so. So you need to press. Okay. See that? It won't focus. Hello. Okay. And then you need to fold it right back in. See that? That's why I created the letter C because you need to fold it like a swirl and then you need to press. Okay. So this is what it should look like. And then you need to press this down. And you need to open petals more. Okay, just like so. See that? So that's one part. So when you're attaching petals, you always need to remember that when you started the curve on this direction, all of the petals should curve that way, okay? And then once I add it here, I'm going to add here on the next part, okay? Just on the front side. And then I'm going to add another one here and then another one here. So it's like a crisscross motion. So one, two, three, four, and then all the spaces in between you have to fill in with the other petals, okay? So you have to do this continuously until everything is covered and then we'll proceed with the last layer of the petals. Okay, so here I would like to show you that I added the other set of petals on the other side. Okay, you see that? Okay, so this is how it should look like. So one, two three, four, and then all the spaces you need to fill. And then always remember when you're attaching petals on a curved motion, you have to press this part, okay, to slightly open. You see that? So you're creating different levels when you actually push petals, same as this one, okay? See that? So you just need to continue until everything is covered. Okay, so right now I'm gonna show you what it looks like after you added the crisscross of all the petals together. So this is what it would look like. You see the layering? Okay, that's achieved by pressing this part to gently move the petals when you stick them. And then right now you'll see that there are some spaces here. So normally, um, it depends on how much you open your petals and how much you frill your petals. Sometimes you won't be able to use all the 20 petals. So what you need to do, um, for this one, I'll just fold one part of the petal. Okay, let's say for example, this is your one petal. I'll just fold it in the center, just like so. And then you see the space here. I'm gonna put edible glue. Okay, on the inner part, okay, going down, not too much, just enough. And then what I will do, I'll insert this here. Then same procedure, you press, okay? If it's sticking out, you can actually press it down. See that? Okay, so you'll see that there's still space here, so you need to fill up those spaces and then we are done okay so at this part we are already done with the central petals okay so this is how it should look like on a side view and then on the upper view this is what it looks like okay you see that there's so many layers and it's so nice so what you have to do now you need to determine what size of petal will you be adding to the outer part or the last layer so, to determine that, you need to place a cutter, okay? So, it should be at least at the same size, not bigger and not smaller, okay? You see this? So, this is cutter number four. This is what we'll be using. For the measurement, this is exactly 3.5 centimeter in diameter, okay? So, you need to cut at least 15 to 20 pieces of this one, as thin as you can, okay? And then, later on, I'll show you how to put it here. Okay, so you need to cut 15 to 20 pieces of this one. So, again, using our paste. Let's 
next one. So, same color as our base. So, I need to roll this out thin as you can. Okay. The thinner, the better because we will vein this. Okay, and then you need to cut 15 to 20 pieces of this one. And then after that, you need to put it on your foam pad. Just like so. Dab cornstarch so it won't stick. And then, you need to thin out the edges. Okay? Same as with the procedure of how you make an ordinary rose. Because a Juliet rose is actually a rose. It's a different variety, okay? So, once you have something like so... We thin out the edges. The measurement is already 4.5 centimeter. Okay, and then you have to put this on your veiner. You can actually make this more thinner and wider. Okay, put it on your veiner, your rose petal veiner. Press. Okay, so after that, this is what you'll have. You need to get your sponge. Okay, and then what I will do, I'll dab cornstarch and then using my bigger ball tool, I will cup the petal. Okay, so using the bigger ball tool, I dab cornstarch, I will cup the petal just like so. If you find it hard to cup a petal, what you can use is this drying device that's DIY. So what I have here is styrofoam ball. Cut into half. This is 2.5 inches. You can simply put your petal like so and then let it dry a little bit. And then once it's a little bit dry, we'll attach it to our base. And then we're done. Okay, so you need to do this on all the 15 or 20 petals. You can actually go more if you want it to look fuller. But my standard is 15. Okay? Okay, so right now... Since our center is already dry, as you see that, and then our petals are actually curved, okay, the outer part, the petals for the outer part are actually semi-dry, so we can use it already. So how would you know if it's perfect to use? So when you get it, it's actually, it holds its shape, but it's not that hard yet. See that? So this is perfect. So what you need to do now, um... Basically, you need to add edible glue. So dab the excess on your hands. And when you add edible glue, it has to be on a V motion. Okay, so you put it on the sides. Just like so. And then, of course, my chicken is saying hello to each and every one of you. Okay, just like that. Can you see that? The glue is on a V shape. Then I'll just put it on one part here. It should be at this level. See that? Okay. So it should be a little bit cup, slightly covering the inner part of the petal. Okay, that's how it should look like. And then you only press on the part where you put glue. Okay. I'll, I'll get another one so that you'll see the process. Okay, and then I put edible glue here. Okay, and then it needs to overlap, so I'll put the other one just right here. See that? And then I actually use my palm to gently press it on place. Okay, and then I press it here to make sure that the petals are secured. See that? And then you need to, have to add another one. So the process is just continuous until you finish the first layer, okay? Okay, so when you're done with the first layer of the bigger petals, that's exactly five. But sometimes it would be six. So it depends on how much big you made the petals, okay? So you see that? This is how it looks like. Okay, so it, it needs to be like this, a little bit closed or cup. And then... You need to proceed with the next layer of the petals. Just the same technique, so you have to add it a little bit lower. Okay, so at this level, just like that. Okay.
Okay. See that? So we need to add another layer of 5 petals. That's why it's 15 or 20. So basically there are 3 or 4 layers of bigger petals slowly opening up. Okay. So when you add the second layer, it should be again at this level. You see that? Okay. And you need to apply the same procedure. Okay, so right now you can see we're actually done with our David Austin rose. So this is how it should look like. So I used 20 petals for the outer part. Okay, and then for some parts like this, I used a barbecue stick or a toothpick to make holes to make it realistic. Okay, and then what you need to do now, uh, I have here, but this is optional. If you want to make it more realistic, you need two pieces of cutter number one. So this is 1.5 centimeter in diameter. So what you need to do, gently you need to just thin out the edges, okay? And then you need to frill the edges randomly, okay? And then some parts, this one you need to really, really tear it, okay? So I'll put holes. So this is actually the petals that are closer to the calyx. So this is what you put underneath. Just like so, okay? We need at least two pieces of this one and you need to dry it on a very irregular manner. Okay, as you see here. And then once it's dry, we're gonna dust all our flour and put our calyx. Okay, so right now, the two pieces of very small petals are already dried. Again, this is optional, but if you want to make it more realistic, it's a must to put this too. Okay, so here is our um, Juliet Rose. You see that? It's very pretty. Okay, that. Okay, so what you need to do, um, I'll be adding edible glue. Very little, okay, on this too. Okay, not too much, just enough. Okay, because if you put too much, it's going to slide. So what I'm going to do, I'll put this under. So, just like so, okay. So one should be here, and another should be just on the opposite side. Okay, see that? That's how it looks like. And then later on, we'll dust this with green and add more colors of red and etc. Because this is the first petal that actually bloomed and then now uh, I'll teach you how to make another technique on how you can make a uh, calyx so what I have here is an ordinary um, floral tape so I cut a size that is 1.5 inches it can be longer depending on you so what you need to do you need to stretch to activate the stickiness and then one side you need to twist okay and make it pointed just like so, you see that? And then, after that, what I will do now is, you need to do it on all the other five. Okay? Just twist and make the ends pointed. You can actually make this longer if you want, but my standard is 1.5 inches and then I expand to activate the stickiness. Okay, just like so. You should really twist it for it to be pointed because the more that it's pointed, the more that it looks realistic. 
Okay, but of course you have to inform your clients that they cannot eat the floral tape, okay? So what you need to do next, so my chickens are excited. So I'll attach one here first, okay? So you can actually put it like so. So I twist one part, okay? And then you need to do this on all the other sepals, okay? Okay, one is very short. It has to be at least at the same level. I wonder why this is too short. Okay, so once you have this five pieces, what you need to do, you need to get a longer floral tape. Okay, just like so, and expand to activate the stickiness. And what I will do, I'll put one first, just right here. Okay, closer to the flower and then as if you're just wrapping a wire so put the floral tape under and then gently wind okay to see that just like so so you need to do this on all the five and then once everything is attached we'll add more details Okay, so right now we are done attaching all the sepals made from floral tape. So what you need to do now, you need to get your edible glue. Okay, so just a little. Dab the excess on your hands. So what I will do, I will put edible glue on where I wanted to actually stick this floral tape. Just like so and then just press lightly. Okay, so it will attach a little bit. Okay, you see that? You see the effect? Okay, so yeah, you just need to add edible glue on some parts, okay? Not all, just on some parts because not all the sepals or the calyx are actually sticked onto the flower. Some are moving freely, okay? Just like so, and then this is our calyx. So now we'll proceed with dusting. Okay, so right now we are done with our Juliet Rose. See that? It's very pretty. So what we need to do now to make it more calm alive, we need to add dust, okay? So if you're in a hurry, again, for some of you are asking, you can actually use an airbrush if you're in a hurry. But of course, the effect of dusting is different than airbrush. Okay, so first we'll add the yellow glows at the center. So I'm using a makeup brush specifically for my flowers okay so you need to dust the inner part with very little yellow okay so it will have that slightly orangey glow see that see the difference so i'm just focusing on the center here and then i'll slightly go outside okay just add very little yellows not too much Okay, so just go around Okay, but not too much just little So you need to focus on the center that should be very orangey yellow and then I'll switch on to my pink Again for the dust that I'm using I'm always using rainbow dust But you can actually use other brands such as sugar flare and crystal colors Okay, so for the pinks, I'll just be adding on the edges Okay, not too much, just a little. Okay. So I also mix in cornstarch with my petal dust so that I can control the colors more because if you'll be using it pure, the colors are very high pigmented. Okay. So sometimes when you dab a little, it's way, way too much. Okay, so it's important to dilute it in cornstarch. Okay, just add little bits of glow. You see that? Now it's coming to life. And also my chickens are coming to life again. They're excited. Okay, so after that, so this is what you'll have. See that? It's very pretty. So what you need to do now, um, you need to get your green dust. 
Okay. I'll just put this aside. And then you need to get your brush specifically for color green. So what I like to do, I'll just add very little greens here. Okay, in the bottom parts of the petals. So this just adds the glow. Okay. Just like that. just on the lower parts of the petal and then i'll be switching on my very tiny brush that's specifically used for liquid gel so i'll put this aside so what i have here uh this is actually gel color that actually dried a little bit okay and then i have here water but it's important you'll you'll be using gin or vodka so i'll first get very little yellows Okay, so what we'll do, you see this bottom part, the ones with holes on it. So you need to color this with greens. Just like so. See that? Okay, and then gently we'll add in very, very little reds. Okay, so you really have to dilute this in water so that the colors are not too strong. Okay, see that? So just gently mix and blend the colors. Okay, so if you need, you need to add more green for this. See that? So it's a little bit shiny, but once it dries, it's gonna be matte. Okay, that's very normal if you're using gel color or liquid colors. Okay, and of course, you have to color the top part also so that it would look nicer. So when you're doing this, you have to make sure that your petals are fully dry. Otherwise, you'll have problems, okay? Okay, and then we're done. So the spots here, I would like to add some very little greens and reds, okay? Just to make it more realistic. See that? Okay. And then some parts here, I would just add very little tinges of the reddish green color. Okay, and then I'll dilute more in water, and then what I'll do... Normally, I add those spots okay, at the bottom parts of the petal, just to make it more realistic. Okay, and there you have it. This is your beautiful Juliet Rose. So, I hope you learned a lot. Thank you. Bye!